Hello and welcome. In this short video, I'm going to do a walk and talk through the ISO 45001 gap analysis tool, which is based upon the ISO 45001 standard, the requirements in there, the clauses, and any specific things that we should focus on. The first thing you'll see is the introduction uh, worksheet, and that provides a quick overview in terms of what the scores are relative to each of the various clauses. And the scoring criteria is defined here, where there is nothing in place all the way through to optimum, where it's comprehensively understood, very well managed, and it's a part of everyday routine and culture. The next sheet is the heat map. And in this heat map, we go into a slightly deeper dive from the introduction one with a quick overview. On this worksheet, all the questions and the scores associated with them are shown relative to the clause. So here, for example, under clause four, with context of the organization, there are four sub clauses and all the questions here are assigned a certain score. We'll do a demo of this in a minute, but I just wanted to say that on this heat map worksheet, you can see how it gives you a more granular view relative to the various clauses. Just a quick overview on some of the other worksheets. Four is scope, five is lead and engage, six is focusing on plan, Clause 7 and 8 focuses on do, and Clause 9 focuses on check, and 10 is act. This is based, of course, on the plan, do, check, act loop. Let's take a quick example here and have a look at the scope side of things. If we were to do the gap analysis, we might answer these questions. The first question could be, has the organization determined external and internal issues that are relevant to its process and affects its ability to achieve the intended outcome of its occupational health and safety management system? Let's assume that we are going through the scores and we say for the first one there's no awareness, the second one might be at an optimum point, and as you can see the scoring that we provided gives a color coding on the side. Quickly picking these, let's be really uh, sort of uh, good and say, hmm, go middle of the road for all of the rest of these, drag and drop. Um, and then if we go a bit further down here, let's give this a sort of a, an orange color, move it down. Let's give this um, basic awareness again. And let's say this one's really bad. There's no awareness. So you can see there's a, there's a sort of a color distribution that is going on here and also understood. So I'm just really sort of for a dummy organization pretending these are the relative scores for these requirements on that clause. So that's this clause in terms of a overview done relative to the questions. Let's see what's happened to the heat map. Focusing on the heat map, you can see there's a distribution of the colors here and you can immediately see where there are some urgent need for attention. Understanding the organization, its context, on question one, we got a red, on question two, it was fine. We can quickly go to scope, question one, and say, well, what is it that we need today? It's, it's not relevant to its purpose. We know how to address that. Going back to the heat map, we can do the same with all of the others. By the time you've addressed all of the questions or answered all of the questions in this gap analysis, you'll get a complete distribution of scorings and also where the focus areas are so you can take a sniper approach based upon this granular overview on uh, requirements within the clause having of course done this granular view we can now flick to the introduction and you can see the quick overview of where the scores are relative to each of those clauses this is particularly useful if you're doing dashboards and you want to capture key performance indicators. You can almost copy this over and put it onto your dashboard for your uh, leadership to have a look at within your organization. So that's a quick overview on the gap analysis tool for ISO 45001. It's pretty straightforward and it will be a great way to sort of look in terms of granularity where there are improvements to be made. This overall score at the top is really just based upon taking all of the percentage averages and giving you a sort of a quick overview. I would say that plays some importance, but not as much in terms of gap analysis when you look at it relative to where the shortfall falls are relative to the clause requirements. Thank you for stopping by and watching this and any questions do let us know. 
happy to always help and support. Thanks.